Hey there guys, it's Rick here with Airgun Web, where we tell you the facts, not fluff. I have got the Gamo Swarm Magnum Pro 10X Gen 3i here. I for Please forgive all the background noise. We are at the Southern Sportsman's Hunting Lodge for the Gamo Score Master Classic. And I get to stay back and do these videos while they're out running in the woods chasing squirrels. I think I got the better part of the deal, frankly. Anyway, what I'd like to do today is start bringing you guys through some kind of tips and tricks, things that you guys can use to get the most out of your air gun. Now, this is probably gonna be one long video and we may break it up into smaller sections. I'm not quite sure how we're gonna do it, but however, my hope is that this is gonna be useful for you guys so that you really do get the most out of your brake barrel. Let's get started. So before we jump right in, I wanna say thank you to Gamma USA for sponsoring Airgun Web, for bringing us out here, uh, for helping us do what we do to help bring you guys some great information. So yeah, super huge thank you to them. What we have here is the top of the food chain for Gamo in their uh, multi-shot brake barrels. They have one gun that's a little bit more powerful that is a 25 cal, but it's single shot. So we're gonna, we, that's its own, in its own class, beautiful gun. We, we are gonna be doing a video of that here shortly. But this is their top of the line, got all the bells and whistles they have uh, in their multi-shot brake barrel. This has the new stock, the new pro stock. I happen to really like this versus the thumb hole. Um, I love the grooves here on the side. It just is more comfortable for me personally. It's, that's very, very subjective. Other people are gonna have a different, uh, different take. So let's talk, first of all, let's talk a little bit about what this gun's good for, right? Well, it's great for plinking in the backyard. It's great for hunting small game. It's, it's a viable gun out to 50 yards easily. It's got plenty of power. The trick is, can you yield accuracy? Can you yourself, the shooter behind the trigger, can you do your part to make it useful at 50 yards. Well, that is the challenge, isn't it? So, what people don't realize, one of the expectations I wanna address is that these guns take skill to shoot. They're not easy. Um, so if you get one of these and immediately you're not just drilling the bullseye every time you take it out, well, that's, that's normal. It takes time. Um, I've got, oh goodness, 16, 17 years into this uh, at this point, and I'm just getting to where I can get consist consistent. Um, okay, a little bit of an exaggeration, but the point is that these guns, because of the recoil, and I know that's like gonna be our first topic, right? Recoil uh, is something that people don't associate with air guns. Well, these have a hell of a recoil, frankly, and here's why. The way these work is there's a big steel piston in here, right? So when I compress this down by cocking the barrel, it locks, and then you have this, which is just air, so you have this compression chamber. When I pull the trigger, this big heavy steel piston flies forward, hits the front of the compression chamber, and that's gonna to wanna to drive the gun forward. So you have uh, two recoils with the gun. You have a re your, your standard recoil, which is into your shoulder, then you have the re reverse recoil, which is throwing the gun forward. Now, you know, your typical firearm is gonna be shooting 20, like an AR, 2,800 feet per second, okay? So super fast. So when you pull the trigger, the, the bullet's gone. What you do after that is somewhat, somewhat irrelevant. It's not the case with these guns. So let's say even if you're doing a thousand foot per second, that recoil, when this hits the front of the compression chamber, the, the pellet's still in the barrel, right? So if you don't have consistent hold, so first thing we'll talk about, we've talked about recoil, now let's talk about hold. This hold is like super important. So a lot of people want to rest it like this and they want to bag it. You're, you're going to frustrate yourself. I'm just telling you. You got to shoot these guns, okay? So these are guns that you just go into it understanding that you're going to have to do uh, real marksmanship. You're going to have to hold them. You're going to have to have good trigger control. You're going to have to have good follow through. These things will teach you how to shoot in a way that you frankly won't get with a firearm. I'm just telling you. Uh, these things are... are they will work you. They will reward you handsomely when things go well, and they will punish you when you don't do your job. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about hold and how to get how to get the best out of it. So if this barrel could be moving with the pellet still in it, if I change my position on the foregrip, right, then that's gonna jump forward. It's gonna do so at a different time, different place, different velocity. Uh, depending on where I move my hand, right? So you always wanna grip it in the same place. And this becomes super important if you're gonna take this out hunting. So let's say you, you're gonna hunt with this, that's your goal, right? You're, if you always shoot off a bag like this and you're all viced in and everything, when you take this out in the field, you're not gonna hit the broad side of the barn. It's just not, it's not gonna happen, right? So you need to practice like you're going to use it. So 
if you're going to lean up against a tree or you're going to be using shooting sticks or you're going to, whatever you're going to be doing, that's how you want to be practicing, right? So um, I can generally uh, lean up against a tree or whatever. I'm using my hand to support the rifle. So this for me works. And then I want to get like super comfortable and then make sure I have good trigger control. And when I pull the trigger, I want to make sure that I'm, after I pull the trigger, I want to have what's good follow through. So follow through is that you wash it all the way down and you don't move. It's sort of like a black powder. You pull the trigger, but that isn't like the end of it, right? So you pull the trigger and then you follow that pellet all the way to the impact and then you give it a one count or something before you move. Follow through is super important. We have, our brains are wired to like, uh, uh, what's the right word? Forgive me, I'm missing, I'm forgetting the word. We, we actually anticipate, that'll work, we'll anticipate something before it's actually happened. And so we'll pull the trigger and then we'll look and we've pulled the shot. And the air guns will punish you hard if you do that. Uh, firearms aren't, aren't like that, the bullets moving too fast, but air guns, it'll punish you. So you want to get locked in, take your shot, and then maintain your sight picture after, after you're done. So you wanna have this be consistent. You wanna shoot off your hand. Don't do like this, you'll find yourself frustrated. And then you wanna get a very similar feel. So you wanna grip it very similarly. You wanna pull the trigger the same way. I've had guns that are so sensitive, depending on what side of the stock you put your thumb, would meant the difference between accuracy or accurate or inaccurate. So you, you need to find you know, what's gonna work for you. And that takes time, trigger time, backyard time, target time, whatever it takes, it takes time. So don't be discouraged if you get out there and it's not like immediate success. Well, you gotta work for it. But once you got it dialed in, son of a gun, these things can be a lot of fun. And boy, you'll become a much better shooter in the end. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go start a camera. I've got a target at 20 yards. The other thing we want to talk about is it, it really comes, if you're, if you're just learning this, take my advice. Start close. You don't need to start your, your trying to shoot accurate groups at 50 yards. You're going to find yourself more frustrated. If you can't shoot accurately at 10, 15, 20 yards, you ain't going to do it at 50. So scoot in. You're going to be able to develop good technique by being in close, right? So I've got 20 yards, which is I think is a good backyard distance when I lived in town, in city limits. I barely had 20 yards. So I think that's pretty, pretty good. Now, here I have all the way out to 100 if I wanted to and back at my own range. Sorry, bumped the mic. And back at my own range, I have 100 or if I can, I can go set up and have 300 or 400, 500 if I want. But we're talking air guns, right? But 20 yards is a good backyard distance. And frankly, if you're new, start at 10 yards, start at 15 yards. You don't have to do 50 yards right out of the gate, right? Learn the technique, get your confidence up. If you get really good at 15 yards, then back it out to 20, you're gonna need some work. Back it out to 20, you get that licked, go to 25, get that licked, go to 30, you guys get it. You're gonna, this is a process of getting to be, uh, of becoming a better marksman. And these guns will definitely help you do it. And then you're going to go pick up your firearm. You're going to shoot circles around your buddies. They're going to say, how did you do that? And you're going to say, well, I shoot air guns. They'll look at you sideways, but you're going to be the one making the better shots. I can tell you from experience, that's how that works. All right. So I'm going to go start that camera on that target. And we're going to go through um, really one of the other things that happens is people want to chase their shots on their scopes. Let's walk through how to get the most out of it when you're using a scope. And uh, yeah, remember, we're shooting groups. If you chase that single shot, again, you'll be frustrated. Let me go start that camera. I'll be right back. First of all, let's talk about some expectations, right? So good expectations, something that you, how do you know if that's accurate? Um, this is my rule of thumb. For brake barrels, I go, say, 25 yards. If I'm shooting inside an inch at 25 yards, I'm a happy guy. So that's four MOA, essentially. That's okay. PCPs, I want to see two MOA. But brake barrels, I'm happy with four MOA. So if we're at 20 yards, if we're shooting three quarter inch groups, I'm a happy guy, okay? As you reach out, you know, 50 yards, if you can shoot an inch at 50 with a brake barrel, yeah, you should, you should start competing. Uh, so that's very impressive. You know, it is, the, these, I should say, these guns will challenge you. They're super powerful. They, I love the fact that now we have a 10 shot magazine on a brake barrel. How cool is that? I mean, that is freaking awesome. And yeah, so anyway, um, let's go ahead and get started. 
Again, I'm at 20 yards here. I'm gonna take a couple shots and I'm gonna take three shots and we're gonna see where those three shots land. And if they're not dead center, we're gonna move the scope and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to move the scope effectively so that you're not like wasting pellet time and all that kind of other stuff. All right, so here we go. Okay, so you wanna get comfortable, get your grip where you're gonna try and be as consistent as possible in everything you do so that things remain the same. We'll take three shots. Okay, I'm, I'm hitting a little low. I was earlier too, which is perfect. So we'll, we'll talk about how to adjust the scope. Okay, so the reason I'm taking multiple shots is that I, I want to move the group. I want to move the group of shots over. I mean, to hit the same hole every time, I can do it with some PCPs that are super fun and accurate. Those are great. Break barrels, well, there, I guess there are some that can do it, and I have done it at times, but most of the time you're going to get a cluster, like your three or four or five shots. You want to move the group. If you, like, if I started chasing each shot, I'd never, I'd never get where I wanted. Okay, I think we got basically three shots like in a little little bitty group there. So I'm low right. <clears throat> Let's say I wanna bring those up. So you're gonna move, you've got uh, a legend, uh, like rotate it this way to go up, rotate it the other way to go down, they have left and right on this side. You're gonna move. You're gonna move your dial in the direction you want your shots to move. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, and this is like relative. Um, at 100 yards, one click is quarter quarter inch. So at 20 yards, one click is essentially nothing. So if you're at 20 yards and you need to move the needle, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to click it. I, I'm gonna go probably eight clicks here at 20 yards, and let's see where that puts us. The other thing I like to do is move one direction at a time. So I'm gonna go up eight clicks. And then, this is habit, uh, it's a bad habit, or maybe it's a good habit. It's a bad habit, I think, because as you get into nicer optics, you don't need to. But I, I kind of tap the scope a little bit. <laughs> um, the, the more budget scopes, uh, sometimes they need a couple shots to settle, and kind of just light tapping it kind of can accelerate that process. I'm using the stock Gamma scope. This is a three to nine by 40. I find the scope perfectly fine. There's a lot of people that are gonna try and tell you, you gotta buy a new scope. No, you don't. If, learn to shoot with this and then get another scope. Then you'll, then you'll actually have the skill set to make use of it. But this scope is perfectly fine, by the way. All right. It, I wish it had some other features, but scope's fine. All right, so I've gone eight clicks and let's see where that puts us. Again, I want to maintain my hold, try and be as consistent as possible, and all the pressure that I'm putting on my grip, my cheek, my hand, all of that, trying to be consistent. All right. If we can put another couple right there, that'll make me happy. Okay. All right, so we got basically three shots touching again, and they're up in the center, ideal. Could we move those just a teeny bit to the left? Probably, right? Um, and you're gonna follow the same example. You're gonna come over here, and there's a L that tells you this way is left, and you don't need to move it far. I mean, what are we looking at here? I mean, goodness, we are basically maybe, I would maybe go, I don't even know if it's a quarter inch we need to move, in fact, Personally, I wouldn't muck with it because I think we're doing pretty good. So let's just actually leave it. But you're going to do the same process. If you need to move it, remember, at 100 yards, if you're one click's a quarter inch at 20 yards, you got to have more clicks, right? So eight, eight or so to move it to see the needle move, I think, is what you want. 
So we've got, uh, we've talked about uh, the mechanics. We've talked about recoil. We've talked about grip and hold. We've talked about follow through. We've talked about technique. We've talked about how to adjust your scope. What about some troubleshooting, right? So what do you do when the gun, like, I think this gun's shooting great, right? If I can keep, uh, if I could put all my shots in a, in a dime or a nickel group at 20 yards, I'm a happy freaking guy, okay? So that's awesome for me. I'm tickled silly, especially if I could just come out and do it consistently. So that I got to come out and do that, right, to see if it works. So that's going to be the next fun part. But what happens when you're getting these great groups and all of a sudden things stop working? Well, that stinks, right? Um, and there's like, uh, all, everybody say, oh, it's your scope, and it's this, it's that, and now you're spending money on all kinds of stuff you don't need to spend money on, and, uh, and then now you're frustrated. So you don't want that. So the first thing you're gonna do, check your screws, right? Check your scope screws, check your stock screws. When I started this today, uh, I shot a group, it was a little bit bigger, um, and then I said, you know what, let me check my stock screws. I got my torque bit out went through and sure enough, they were just the teeniest bit loose. Now, why does that matter? Well, if this isn't rigid, that stock's moving around, you're gonna have that same variability with, with, because of the recoil. And because of the recoil, that reverse recoil is hard on stuff, the screws are gonna loosen up over time. So if you shoot 50, 100 shots, check your, just check your stock screws. And that alone is gonna save you a ton of headache, I'm just telling you. That's, you're, gonna, you're gonna thank me for that one. And also, your scope mounts. Now, if you're adjusting your scope mounts, you're putting different tension on this, you may have to recite your scope, just, just so you know. Once this gets sort of no longer moving and like I could put my bit in and it's, I'm not getting any movement anymore, you're good to go. But even on this, when I took this out of the bag today to do this video, um, after I shot my first group, before I shot this for the video, I checked all my screws and sure enough, these were not loose, but they certainly could need, they could, they could use a little tightening, which I did. So everything's now tight, and I think that's why the gun's shooting so consistently. Um, you'd be surprised how critical that is. People miss it, they don't do it, and then they're buying new scopes, doing all kinds of things, and wondering why they're not getting the same results they used to. The other thing it could be is sometimes there's something mechanically wrong with the gun, right? So it happens. It's not nearly as often as people think. It's usually them, not the gun. But uh, it, let's say there is. A great tool is a chronograph. Um, a, uh, the, I like the Pro Chrono Digital Deluxe. I don't have that one with me today. But it talks to your cell phone. You, it reads the, it gives you the velocities right back to you. I think those are awesome. You know, if you baseline your gun, and all, all I'm getting this FPS with these pellets, and it shoots great, and then now you're not getting accuracy, and all of a sudden your FPS is all over the place, or it's low, or it's just, well, that's where you could have something mechanical going on with the gun. Now, I wanna say, Gamma has a great warranty program, and they have some great technicians. So if your gun's under warranty, and even if it's out of warranty, contact them, they will help you out, okay? You don't wanna be taking these things apart and doing it yourself, you just don't. A lot of people think they want to, Having been a guy back in the Springer days, used to tune a ton of these things. Well, the spring guns, less the gas rams. Uh, yeah, it's not something you want to do. Uh, I mean, maybe you really do want to do it, and more power to you. But if it's in warranty, they're going to fix it. If it's out of warranty, they have a flat rate rebuild. So it's very affordable. It's worth doing. If you, have, if you think you're having something mechanical going on with your gun, don't give up. Reach out they will take care of you. I actually know the guy who runs that department, super nice guy, and he really cares about the products and that they're working the way they're supposed to. So um, you're, not, you're not left out uh, to fend for yourself. They do have a great service department that can help you out. So that's going to be it, guys. I hope that's been useful. Uh, we are going to be setting up for some shooting for those for folks when they get back from the hunt today. If they want to play with some more air guns, I got some other guns to take out here and play with. Super excited about that. But Hopefully that's been useful. This is the Gamo Swarm Magnum Pro 10X Gen 3i. Gosh, it's a long name. And it is the top of the food chain for Gamo's multi-shot brake barrels. Just a really, really nice gun, but it takes a little work to get the most out of it. Hopefully this video has been useful so that you can get the most out of your air gun. And these principles I'm talking about today, they will translate down any spring gun. This is gonna be helpful. All right, guys, that is going to be it. My name is Rick here with Airgun Web, where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Lastly, I want to say a super huge thank you to Gamo for bringing us out here. And also, if you guys have made it this far, uh, you might be one of our Patreon members or our Officer Club members. 
Really appreciate you guys too and all your support. So that is it. It's Rick here with Arrogant Web. Thanks for watching.